You are watching a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service video podcast. Join U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Vermont State Fish and Wildlife Biologists as they conduct a fall swarming survey of bats affected with white nose syndrome at the Elizabeth Mine in Stratford, Vermont. We're here with the State of Vermont Fish and Wildlife to survey the Elizabeth Mine for bats. We've been doing this fall swarming survey since 2002 or 2003 where we've documented um, unbelievable numbers of bats that we catch in what this is a, a harp trap um, during the fall swarming season and this is when bats um, mate they are kind of a it's a meet and greet time where the males and the female bats actually uh, gather in or near hibernacula the places where they overwinter and mate um, and they will fly from site to site, so this isn't necessarily where they're going to end up, but this is where they do their mating. We've had three species in the past, the little brown bat, the northern long-eared bat, and the small-footed bat, um, which we've caught in, in pretty good numbers. Uh, historically, when I say historically, it's just, you know, about five years ago or as, as little as three years ago, we were able to catch 900 bats in these two harp traps within the space of two hours. Um, Two years ago it was about 600 and last year it was 300. So we don't know what we're going to catch this year because this is one of the sites that's been affected by white nose syndrome. We're hoping to find lots of bats of all three species in good condition, uh, healthy wings, full bellies, fat, sassy, happy, ready to go into hibernation. Um, I don't know what we will find. Uh, hopefully a lot, but uh, I suspect less. We're working with the state of Vermont uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife. They are actually the um, the regulatory authority for these species of bats because there are no endangered species. They are also our um, partners um, and, and collaborators in the investigation of the white nose syndrome here. In fact they were the second state to identify white nose syndrome after New York and have been um, deeply involved in the investigation monitoring research. Well, we are uh, surveying again tonight and during the fall swarming period um, this site which is Elizabeth Mine in Stratford, Vermont and uh, it is a uh, abandoned copper mine that literally not until um, about eight, nine years ago did we know was a significant bat hibernacula. And in fact um, the surveys that we have been conducting s since 2002 and 2003 at this site indicate it may well be one of the largest uh, in New England. It surely is the second largest known hibernaculum in Vermont, uh, the other being Aeolus Cave in, in Dorset, Vermont, which literally is the largest hibernacula in New England. So the numbers of bats here are, have been uh, amazing, and we have surveyed with two harp traps, which you you have seen already uh, and caught 900 bats in a myriad, uh, period of three hours um, on a given night and so uh, the level of bat activity here is, is has been tremendous but what we have noticed last year um, the numbers have been declining and in fact it was late winter of 2008 that we first got observations of bats leaving this mine during the day and showing up on people's houses. And last year we had uh, those observations occur throughout the winter and in fact many of the houses down in this valley uh, would come home to four, five, six bats on the, the side of their house and they'd found many bats uh, dead in their house as well. So this place has now experienced the full array of symptoms of white nose syndrome and and now we're really just monitoring these bats to see what their condition is as they come into the fall swarming period again this year. As night falls, biologists wait for bats. Biologists carefully remove a bat from the harp trap. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that looks fat. I it's mm -hmm. The bat's wings and body are examined. Biologists put the bat in a container to be weighed. We're weighing we put a hole in it. How much does it weigh? Six point five grams. Yeah. Right. 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 Six point five grams. Oh, wait. 
I've got everything here. So I gave it a VTEM-1. Measurements are taken and recorded in a field log. Okay, so we'll put capture number one. Where's it? 34.9. 34.9 forearm length. Yeah, that looks good. Yep. All right, so that would be a zero. Oh, and Susie, you're going what to number do you have? For that? Give that to me. VTEM-1. They're these little black U-shaped two little appendages yeah. hanging down on either and side of the tail. The bat was determined to be a juvenile male. Oh, okay. So there's uh, more. And it's pointed. Yeah. yeah. And the, the adult okay. is rounded and dark and well formed. Okay. After capture and measurement, right, the bat was safely released All into right. the wild. Go and reproduce like a lot. <laughs> After three hours, only one bat was captured in the harp traps at Elizabeth Mine. Um, we we anticipated there would be less bats um, based on the amount of um, winter mortality that was documented in the nearby town, but um, we didn't anticipate getting one bat going from 300 to one. Well, I don't know, Scott. We went from 900 to 600 to 300. Logical progression, I guess, is mm. one. It was one northern long year. Quite disturbed to see such a dramatic decline, and and you know I, I think there's merit in having one or two of us come back, see if we see just as little activity uh, in another evening. Um, but even if there were uh, issues such as uh, timing, uh, temperatures, uh, while it's not all that cold here, um, maybe there are other factors. So we'll just come back and see. But at this point in time, this is just such a dramatic decline from what we've experienced in the past. It just uh, has to raise some real concerns again. This collaborative survey was conducted by the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. For more information on bats affected with white nose syndrome, go to www.fws.gov forward slash northeast. This video was produced by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Northeast Region, External Affairs, Broadcasting and Audiovisual Services.